Monarch has been a Casa of Lexington volunteer in Bourbon County for two and a half years. She has served as a Casa volunteer on two cases and has served five children. Thank you for joining us, Beth. How did you first learn about Casa? I learned about Casa first through the local newspaper and paper in Bourbon County. I had seen an article every week that came out and I actually cut one of the articles out because it had the phone number on it and I was interested in calling to find out more. I was appointed to grand jury and in one of the grand jury sessions we were on break and one of the attorneys asked us had we heard of CASA and because I had been thinking about it, I said, I have heard of CASA. What I want to know is, does it really make a difference? And without hesitation, he said, absolutely, it makes the biggest difference in the case. Um, and after that, I went ahead and pulled the article I had saved, called the phone number, and set up my first appointment to be interviewed for becoming a CASA volunteer. That's awesome. And that goes to show everyone has a role to play. So even if you can't commit to being a CASA volunteer, we rely on people to share what CASA is and the difference it's making. Now, Beth, I know you've previously shared with me that in your job, you had previously not worked with children. Many prospective volunteers are concerned that they may have a lack of experience in some way and maybe they could not be a CASA volunteer. Can you share with us the support you have received as a CASA volunteer and if it has been an issue for you not having previously worked with children in your job? I've received excellent support both from the local CASA manager in Bourbon County and also the office in Lexington. Uh, there's plenty of educational offerings available, guidance and advice. Whenever I pick up the phone and ask a question, um, the expertise is always there. And then also just my experience as a mother and a grandmother has been invaluable and in really learning to relate to the kids on my case and trying to figure out how to best advocate for their needs. So I really haven't felt the need to have specialized training at all in, in working with children. It's really just common sense and yep. listening and understanding what the needs are. That's that awesome. And by statute, a CASA volunteer is a common everyday citizen. So we want people to be encouraged that we're here to support you. And as Beth said, CASA of Lexington serves Fayette, Bourbon, Scott, and Woodford counties. Our entire team is here to support you because we are one organization. So Beth, let's jump on in to one of your cases. If you'll share with us a little bit about the case and the children or the child that you've served. I currently have two cases. The one I'll talk about is my first one. Um, it involves a little child, currently aged four. He was two when I got the case and was had been placed in foster care. He has special needs. So my role as a CASA volunteer was to get to know him, to understand his situation. He can't speak for himself. For my, so my role was to be able to be his voice in court and make sure that the judge and the other professionals involved in this case understood what he needed to be able to um, grow in to be a successful adult down the road. So my job was to get to know him, to understand his needs, and to communicate for him in the court and make recommendations on his behalf to the judge. Awesome, and how is he doing today? He's doing wonderful. He's transitioned out of foster care into the care of his uh, grandmother who will be adopting him. That whole process is well underway. He's receiving daycare services at a medical model daycare. Um, he's receiving PTOT and speech two to three times a week. He's progressed all along um, in all skills. He's beginning to use words to express his language. He's beginning to direct things in his environment. He actively participates. He'll always have the need to have others provide care for him, but he's becoming more and more involved in his environment, which is great to see. That's amazing, and I think a lot of the steps forward are thanks to Beth and her role as a CASA volunteer. Had this little guy not had the support of Beth and a CASA volunteer, the case could have looked very different. Mm -hmm. um, without the CASA volunteer, he might not be with his blood relative grandmother, raising him in a permanent home. He was not previously receiving all of the therapies that he started receiving at the recommendation of CASA, and he was placed into a medically fragile daycare that can provide additional 
components of care for him. So without CASA, this case could have looked very different. So I want to say thank you, Beth, for your work for this little guy and all of the children that you've served. We're proud to call you a CASA volunteer and just appreciate your time. Is there anything else you'd like to share for anybody out there thinking about being a CASA volunteer? Um, I would say that it's an honor and a privilege to be a CASA volunteer. And when I first started thinking about doing it, I was a little worried that I might not do a very good job. Um, and I was a little scared of what might, I might be faced with as a CASA volunteer. But I thought to myself, if these kids can have the strength to go through what they're going through, I can have the strength to walk by their side and help them through the process. And I've gotten way more out of it than I've given to it. Um, it's been a very valuable part of my life, and I really appreciate the opportunity to do it and be a child's voice in court. It's well, thank wonderful. you very much. Thank you for your service and your time today, and I think that was a powerful statement. So I'd like to encourage anyone that's considering that feels like they believe in the children and their community enough to make this commitment. Give us a call. We'll answer any questions or talk through concerns you have, but there are children waiting and we need you.